Alright, so you want to go drag racing, but you don't know what safety equipment you're going to need. As with everything, it sort of depends on your goal. So today we're going to talk about roll cage requirements. That's right, today we're going to talk all about everything you're going to need to go from a 20 in the quarter mile down to a 650, at least from a roll cage standpoint. What you guys are looking at here is my first car, a 1963 Studebaker Lark. We are currently in the process of swapping a Gen 5 L83 5.3 liter with a turbo into the car. So get in here close and I'll show you what you need to go a 10-0. Now before we start with the cage on this car, you guys should know that if you want to go anything slower than a 1150, assuming you don't have a convertible, you don't need any bars in the car whatsoever. So to go a 10-0 in the quarter mile with a fixed roof car, like what you see here, you don't need a ton of bars. This car is legal to go down to a 10.00 in the quarter mile. And what this roll bar consists of is one, your main hoop, which goes up over your head, your door bars, a harness bar, and your two down bars in the back. Now for this particular spec, you have to make it out of inch and three quarter tubing, whereas you'll see later, uh, a lot of the specs allow inch and five eighths, which allows you to make it a little bit lighter. With this cage, you'll notice that there is nothing above my head. There are no bars in the roof, and as you will see later, those are required go a little bit faster. Next up is my dad's 1974 Chevrolet Nova which has a twin turbo de-stroked six liter LS, has made a thousand horsepower on the dyno and has been as quick as an 862 in the quarter mile. This car has an 850 cert cage in it, so let's go over the differences for this spec. This car has a mild steel 850 cert cage in it and that requires the use of inch and five eighths tubing that is 118 thousandths thick on the wall. You'll notice that compared to the 10 cert roll bar, there are quite a few more bars in this cage. Depending on the level of modification that is present in your car, you may need uh, less bars than what are in this car, but at the minimum, you will need the D bars, which go down at a diagonal, from the harness bar, as well as the halo bar in the top, and the two A-pillar bars in the front. Now, the rules also say that since more than a square foot of the floor was modified, it also needs a sill bar, which you see right here. And also, since the firewall has been modified, you need a dash bar, which spans from the two A-pillar bars across the firewall. This is uh, the spec where you begin to get into the area where it's nice to have a removable steering wheel, and this is the first example of that you will see today. Now, since this is a larger car, entry and egress is really not that bad, and something that we do on all of our cages is really try to dial in the fit and finish so that it is as comfortable to live with as possible. Let's go racing, boys. <laughs> Too bad it's winter. Ugh. Another thing with this level of certification is this is the first level where you will see these stickers that are applied to the roll cage. You actually have to set up an appointment with an inspector and have the chassis certified 
by the NHRA in order for it to be legal to race. You'll see this on all faster certs. So that's another thing that you need to be aware of. All right, next up is my 1981 Ford Fairmont station wagon, which has a turbo Vortec 4200 swapped into it. It has been as quick as a 908 in the quarter mile. And while this is still an 850 cert roll cage, this car has a cage that is made out of 4130 chromoly. Depending on the spec that you want to build your car to, you may be able to make the cage in mild steel or chromoly. Now what a lot of people will say to you is, oh, chromoly is lighter. Well, that's actually not true. Chromoly and steel have the exact same density. However, with chromoly, they allow you to run a thinner wall tubing and therefore the cage will end up being lighter. The catch is with this material, you have to TIG weld all of the joints in the cage because chromoly can be susceptible to cracking when you overheat it while welding it. TIG welding allows more precise control of the heat of the weld and therefore you have to TIG weld it. Next up, we have our 1993 Eagle Talon, which we originally built to compete in the LS4 Front Wheel Drive Challenge. And it featured a LS4 5.3 liter with a turbo, and it currently holds the record for the quickest and fastest front wheel drive LS powered vehicle in the quarter mile. This car has a 750 cert roll cage in it. So let's go over the differences. This level of spec is where things really start to get spicy. You're going to notice that there is like double the amount of bars in this particular spec. And it's probably for good reason. Right off the bat, you're going to notice this X in the door and also on the passenger side. Also, there are quite a few more bars in the floor and also in the roof. Now I'm not going to go over every single bar like I did with the previous specifications, but let's just say there's quite a few more. One last thing that I'm going to go over is the funny car portion of the cage. The intent of the funny car portion of the cage is to contain the driver's head in the event that you were to go unconscious or get into a rollover type scenario and your head may be bouncing back and forth. Because of that, you have to make sure that uh, your, your helmet cannot get through any of the holes here in the funny car cage. Because if the wreck is bad enough, you will have no control over that. There are a lot of uh, variations, exceptions, and different ways that you can build this cage. For example, the rear portion of the cage has, I think, like five different ways that you are allowed to do it. And also there are totally different rules depending on if the driver's head is in front of the main hoop, behind the main hoop, uh, or maybe somewhere in between. And things really start to get complicated. Because of that, you really need to buy the SFI spec book for what you want to do. This particular cage is what is known as a 25.5, and that makes it legal for a 750 in the quarter mile. One last thing with this particular spec, and I almost forgot to mention this, is you really got to have a strategy for getting in and out of the car. For this, both feet in, then swing your butt in, and you're into the car. Getting out is a reverse of that process, but just goes to show with this particular cage setup, being that there's this funny car cage here, you really got to think how you're going to get in and out of the car because things start to get a little bit tight. All right, guys, you just heard me mention the SFI book that is uh, for the particular spec that you plan to build the car for. And this is an example of one of them. This is the 25.5 cert or cars that plan to go up to a 750 in the quarter mile. Now, in this book, you're going to notice that there are quite a few uh, rules and exceptions depending on what you cut or did not cut out of the car. And also, there are uh, pictures, 
for how you can build the car and there's lots of different configurations and examples that they give in this book. One last thing I will show you in this book is there is a list of every single bar in the cage and depending on if you build the cage out of chromoly or mild steel it gives a list of the tube diameter and wall thickness that you are required to run depending on what material that you use. Last up is our 1959 Volvo PV544 and this is the current build on our channel. We are in the process of swapping a Vortec 4200 with a turbo into the car and this will hopefully be our quickest and fastest 4200 powered car yet. Because we plan to go very quick in this car, we needed quite the cage in the car. And something we learned from doing our first 750 cert cage on the Talon is there really is no reason you should ever do a 750 cert, at least in my opinion. All right, what you are looking at here is a 650 cert roll cage. Now, what you're gonna notice right off the bat is it really doesn't look very different than a 750 cert. And that's because there's not a lot of differences. In total, there are a few gussets that you have to add here on the doors. There is an extra bar that you have to add in the roof, along with a few gussets up there, and you're 650 certified. All in all, it adds up to about five pounds of weight, and you should really just put them in while the thing's apart, because even if there's the tiniest chance that you might want to go faster than a 750, it's worth doing while the car's apart. Since we're talking about weight, we also weighed every single bar that went into the Volvo. And since this car contains every bar that would go into a 10.0 cert, an 850 cert, and a 750 cert, we can give you the weight of what the cage would be depending on how fast you want to go. Now, the weight of the cage is really gonna be dependent on how big the car is. Obviously, the Volvo is on the smaller size, so depending on what kind of car you're working on, it may be slightly more or slightly less, but you can use this as sort of a rule of thumb, and it will give you a good idea of what it might weigh. So for a 650 cert cage in this particular car, we came up with a grand total of 160.7 pounds. As I mentioned before, it is about five pounds less for a 750 cert. And let's say you wanted to put an 850 cert cage into this car. That would weigh 74.3 pounds. And let's say you only wanted a 10.0 cert. So I hope you found that helpful. One other thing that I wanted to mention about weight was you hear people say a lot, oh, chromoly versus mild steel there's a hundred pounds difference. Well, the difference isn't quite that substantial. In fact, having to put mild steel into a car is only gonna make it 44% heavier. And if we use the numbers that we used before for an 850 cert cage, that's only 32 pounds heavier for a mild steel cage. Now for the people that are going for every ounce, that's a lot of weight but it's really not the 100 pounds that you will hear from some people. All right, guys, I hope you found today's video to be very informative. If you thought the projects that you saw in today's video were interesting enough, maybe hit the subscribe button. Also, if you wanna support the channel, maybe go down to the link in the description and buy yourself a t-shirt. Also, you could hit the join button next to the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, we're gonna get back to work on this car and we'll see you in the next one.